Hello, welcome to my channel. Here's the book, Value of the Pills, and I'm going to read the chapter number four. I know I was really reluctant or late reading the fourth chapter because I read this uh, first one to three chapters in the month of uh, March and April, and uh, here it is in November. But it's perfectly fine as far as you are in the perfect mode. So, without wasting further ado, here is the book. The value of the fear of my favorite shade of home and let which is the fourth chapter. Those of you who haven't, by the way, uh, heard first three chapters, I'm going to add uh, the links of those three in the description box below so that you can catch right from the first video. Uh, you can, you know, audio uh, book kind of, this entire book, read by me. And uh, those of you who have read, uh, I'm sorry for late. But here it goes, the next sub-story of the value of fear. Uh, sub-story number four, the name is The Darkness. At three in the morning, the chief detective obeying the urgent call from Sergeant Wilson of Burgstown arrived from headquarters in light dog car behind a braidless trotter. By the 5.30 train in the morning, he had sent his message to Scotland Yard and he was at the Burlstone station at 12 o'clock to Burkama. White Messi was a quiet, comfortable looking person in a loose tweed suit with a clean shaved, ruddy face, a thousand body and a powerful bandy lady, adorned with gaiters, looking like a small farmer, a retired gamekeeper, or anything upon earth except a very favorable specimen of provincial criminal officer. He was a very bustling and a genial person, the suspect detective. In 10 minutes, we had all found our quarters. In ten more, we were seated in the parlour of the inn and being tweeted through a rapid sketch of those events which have been outlined in the previous chapter. Remarkable, homesick. When the story was unfolded, most remarkable. I can hardly recall any case where the features have been more peculiar. I thought you would say Mr. Holmes paid White Mason in a great delight. We are well up with the time to the fact. Sergeant Wilson had all the facts. I checked them and considered them and maybe added a few of my own. Bobade of home eagerly. Well, I first had the hammer at the mind. There was Dr. Wood uh, to help me. We found no signs of law in the planet. Then I examined the girl. They were buckshot cartridges and Sergeant Wilson pointed out the triggers were wired together so that if you pulled on the hinder one, both barrels were discharged. The soft gun was not more than two feet long. One could carry it easily under one's coat. There was no complete mark with me, but the printer's letters P, E, N were on the flatting between the barrels and the rest of the name had been cut off by the sun. A big P with a flourish above it. E and N smaller at home. Exactly. Pennsylvania Small Arms Company, well known American firm, stayed home. A, the butler. What about him? Is he reliable? Ten years with Sir Charles Chandler. A solid as rock. 
he has been overdone it ever since he took the manor five years ago. He has never seen a gun of the sort of in the house. MacDonald shook his often spot. I'm not convinced yet that there was ever anyone in the house, said he. I'm asking you to consider what it involves if you suppose that this gun was ever brought into the house and that all these strange things were done by a person from outside of man who kept inconvincible. It's clean against common sense. I put it to you, Mr. Holmes, judging it by what we have heard. Well, state your case, Miss Max, said Holmes in a most judicious tone. The man did not bother. Supposing that he ever tried to The ring business and the card pointing to premeditated murder for some private reason. Very good. Here's a man who slipped into the house with the deliberate intention of committing a murder. He knows, if he knows anything, that he will have a difficulty in making his escape as the house is surrounded with water. What weapon would he choose? We would say the most silent in the world. Then he could hope when the deed was done to slip quickly from the window, to wave the move, and to get away at his leisure. That's understandable. But is it understandable that he should go out of his way to bring with him the most noisy weapon he could select, knowing well that it will fetch every human being in the house to the spot as quick as they can run, and that it is all odd that he will be seen before he can get across the moat. Is that credible, Mr. Holmes? Well, you put the case strongly. My friend replied thoughtfully. I suddenly need a good deal of justification. May I ask, Mr. White Mason, whether you examine the farther side of the moat at once to see if there were any signs of a man having climbed out from the water? There were no signs, Mr. Holmes, but it is a strong blessing. And no one can hardly expect them. Uh, no tracks or marks? None? Ah. Would there be any objection, Mr. White Mason, to up going down to the house at once? There may possibly be some small points which might be suggestive. We walk down the quiet route. With a row of full ordered elms on each side of us. That's the window, said White Mason. But one of the immediate right of the drawbridge is open just as it was found last night. On the walk to the edge of the moon and look, then he examined the stone ridge and the grass border beyond it. We walked across the draw drawbridge and were admitted by quaint, gnarled, dry-up person who was the butler in all detectives discussed their theories regarding the murder. Here's a beautiful picture. Sherlock Holmes examining the moon. Holmes had sat intensely of the one during this long discussion. Nothing, no word that was said, with his keen eyes darting to the right and left, and his forehead wrinkled with speculation. I shall like a few more facts before I get so far as the theory was. 
set E, kneeling down beside the body. Our dear man, this injury is a really of fear. Can we have the butler in a few moments? Amy, I understand that you have often seen the very unusual mark. A brand is trying to incite a circle upon Mr. Douglas Forum. Frequently done. You never heard any situation as to what it means? No, sir. It must have caused great pain when it was inflicted. It is undoubtedly a burn. Now I observe in me that there is a small piece of a plaster at the angle of Mr. Douglas' jaw. Did you observe that in life? Yes, sir. He cut himself when shearing yesterday morning. Did you ever know him to cut himself when shearing before? Not for a very long time, sir. The gesture, said home. It may, of course, be a mere coincidence, or it may point to some nervousness which would indicate that he had reason to apprehend danger. Have you noticed anything unusual in his conduct yesterday, Amy? It struck me that he was a little restless and excited, sir. Well then, we will pass to this card, we we 341 It is a rough cardboard. Have you any of thoughts in this house? I don't think so. Holmes walked across the den and dabbed a little ink from each bottle on the blotting paper. It was not printed in this room, he said. Can you make anything of inscription, A? No, sir, nothing. Holmes had gone to the window and was exclaiming, I oh, sorry, Holmes had gone to the window and was examining with his lens. The blood mark on the sleeve. It is clearly the trade of shoe. It is remarkably broad, a play foot, one would say. Curious because so far as one can trace any foot mark in this mudstone corner, one would say it was more sharply so. However, they are suddenly very indistinct. What is under the side table? Uh, Mr. Douglas Dumbbell. Say A. Dumbbell. There's only one. There's another. I don't know, Mr. Holmes. There may. There may have been only one. I have not noticed them for months. One dumbbell? Holmes said seriously, but his remarks were interrupted by a sharp knock at the door. A tall, sunburned, capable looking, clean shaved man looked in at us. I had no difficulty in guessing that it was Cecil Barker, of whom I had heard. His masterful eyes travelled quickly with a questioning glance from face to face. Sorry to interrupt your consultation, said he, but you, you should hear the latest news. An arrest? No, it's a clock. But they have found his bicycle. The fellow left his bicycle behind him. Come and have a look. It is within a hundred yards of Alder. We found three or four wounds and idler standing in a drive inspecting a bicycle, which had been drawn out from a clump of evergreen in which it had been concealed. It was a well used rudge of white work, flashed up from a considerable journey. And that's the end of the story, Jasmine.
So we deal with needs for the sub story. We are reading the value of the sphere, part one. We have read first three chapters. The link below in the description. Fourth chapter I have read in this video. Three more to come. Name of next chapter is the people of the trauma. Further chapter's name is the downing life. And the last chapter's name in the part one of this book is the solution. So do stay tuned with me, do like, share this video, subscribe to my channel and make sure that you do listen all the videos before and I'm coming up with all the rest of the videos pretty much for me. Thank you so much for watching. Do love books. Books are lovely. So are we.